My name is Luke Darnell, pitmaster of Old Virginia Smoke Barbecue, and I'm here to tell you about my new online class available at barbecuechamps.com. This is a 100% tell-all competition barbecue class from yours truly available online. It is a master class with 34 high-definition tell-all online competition barbecue videos that can be watched anytime and they do not expire. They are packed full of pro tips, techniques, and recipes that will show you how to take your barbecue to the next level. These 34 barbecue cooking videos total seven hours and will show you everything that you need to take your competition cooking to a level that you never thought was possible. We've already heard from several teams that have bought our classes and have already seen success and gotten their first calls. So this is something that brings me a lot of joy in sharing my knowledge and seeing people be successful with it. So are you ready to take your competition and backyard cooking to the next level? What are you waiting for? Just go ahead and go to barbecuechamps.com and find Luke Darnell, Old Virginia Smoke. We hope you learn a lot and enjoy these videos and have as much fun cooking these recipes as we had making them. This podcast is brought to you by BarbecueData.com. BarbecueData.com is your one-stop shop for all of your barbecue competition data, historical data, calls, wins, placements, everything under one roof. It's a great way not only to track yourself in the standings, but also to track how you improve your scores from year to year. Listeners of this podcast can receive 20% off of a new subscription to BarbecueData.com with the code PITPOD. That's one word, all capital letters, P-I-T-P-O-D, pit pod. So check your team scores, check on others, and do it all on barbecuedata.com. All righty. Welcome to this edition of Pitmaster, an old Virginia Smoke podcast. My name is Luke Darnell, your host, and we are joined today by Darren Warth from Iowa Smoky D's and Brad Leininger from Getting Basted. How are you guys? We're Dream. great. Great. Dreamy. Great. I know that both of you are significantly warmer than I am right now. Yep. Daddy. Yep. I, I would, I would, I would agree. Even though this morning when I went to work at five 30 this morning, it was a minus four wind chill. And then when I arrived in Florida, it was 81. So, so we left my house yesterday and it was 80. When we left the airport this morning in Kansas city, it was 16. And then that was back to 80 again. So do you, feel bad, do you feel bad for him now? No, well, a little bit, but I think it warmed back up. So I think it was just kind of a quick little, little old front that blew through. So yeah. It's, uh, We've dropped 40 degrees today. It was 62 today. And now it's massive thunderstorm and wind and just falling out. So yeah, it was nasty. Yeah. He loves, he loves Luke loves thunderstorms. I know. I don't mind thunderstorms. I don't like tornadoes. No. Oh, it's, it's, we're all about tornadoes where I'm at. Yeah, me it's too. Heard. No, you're supposed to go away from them, not towards them. Not, not where I'm from. We chase them. That's just good old. You stand out in the pool and yell at everybody to come out and look at it. See? That's a Friday <laughs> night for us. That's wow. a 12 pack of beer. That's right. Exactly right. There's a lot of commonalities here that you're going to see throughout this conversation. Everybody, these two like to chase tornadoes. I do not. No, that's when you go. When the sirens say hide, you should go somewhere safe. But I mean, the problem with it is, is you, you, you it's like anything, you start taking it for granted, right? Like you, you, you get you know, all spring, they're going off and you're just like, okay, you go to the basement for one of them, you know, and, and then nothing happens. And so it's just the boy who cried wolf, right? And, you know, so you just, you just learn to ignore them. Right. <laughs> Disagree. Disagree. Anyway, let's get to the topic of our podcast. What is the topic um, of this podcast? Topic of the podcast. It's always popular in debates around just about anything when you're talking about, say, LeBron versus Jordan or Jack Nicholas versus Tiger or, you know, who is the greatest of all time? And we have this conversation a lot in barbecue circles. And I don't know that anyone's ever brought together the two greatest of all time in our hobby which I would say is both of you and have a discussion. Wait a second. When, since when did Brad start 
getting that label. <laughs> I don't think I had that label. I don't know. Just saying. There are many, many people out there who refer to Brad as the guy. <laughs> Which leads me to a first question, a great question, and that's a great place to start probably with you, Brad, is when someone calls you that, how does that, how do you react and how does that make you feel about it? I mean, obviously, I I never set out, you know, to, to you know, I guess one contest at a time is kind of how I got where I got. And it's one of those deals I remember back in, in 2013, 2014, you know, it, when, when cooking, you know, when I first met Darren and, and, and up there cooking against them and, and a lot of guys that aren't around that were cooking back then. But if you cooked against Darren back then, I mean, not that he's not great now, but my God, like that guy was top three, you know, and, and, and just to be, have people say that I'm even in the same conversation is just something that like, it's, it's really not even something that I've really thought about or, or, or want to put there. So I'm honored, you know, I mean, I'm really am. And it's just one of those things that I don't really worry about it too much. It's not something that I'm out there. Like, I don't think it's anything you can strive for, right. It's just one of these days you just put together stats and you put together wins and you put together competitions and eventually, you know, hopefully you find yourself in the conversation and, and just to be in a conversation of something like that with somebody like Darren, who, like I said, I mean, it's just, you know, arguably, you know, with one year swept pretty much all four of the majors or three of the four anyway, and in, in a year and, and probably the greatest year in competition barbecue at, at, that I've ever seen, you know, since I've been around. And so just, just to even have done in my career where somebody could consider me in, in the same breath as Darren is just honestly humbling. What about you, Darren? I mean, it's been going with you for a while now. People have been calling you that and. Well, I think I, it's I, know a, that- I think it's a generational thing, Luke. I think it I, maybe not generational, but maybe in barbecue generations, because it it was there was a point in my career when you look back at 2013, 14, 15, all the way through 17 was, you know, I, when I was showing up, I was playing to win, right? And, and we won, and and we had spectacular years, and and I was cooking 30, 40 times a year. And then became other focuses in life, like grandkids, like Florida homes, like, you know, everything else. And so cooking for me became a lot less of a priority, even though I still love to do it. So, you know, when you look at it, it's like, I'm the old goat. He's the new goat. Right. Right. When you, right. Because, you know, I, I mean, Brad kills it now. I, I don't kill it now, but I don't really, I probably should start trying a little bit. I mean, I don't even really, I mean, you saw me cook. I mean, I mean, who's stupid enough to just pull up and say, I've never really cooked a contest on a can or half the meats on a can. Who's stupid enough to go cook on a can and cook all four meats? You know, that's just the type of shit that I just pull off and just, that's fun to me. It isn't focused on winning the contest. It's focused on, Hey, I wonder if I can do this. Wonder if I can go to, I wonder if I can go to Kroger and get a shopping cart and steal a bread rack in the back and cook a contest and beat somebody. That's my (laughs) challenge. Right. And yeah, I mean, I get that. And I get that, you know, when you said, let's rewind this a little bit. I want to come back to that too, because I did witness that cook and made fun of it often yet it was effective and then i kicked, then I kicked your ass <laughs> I, I, I just said it, it, was it, a, it while, while the entire time when i was cooking you kept going if you beat me i'm quitting if you beat me i'm quitting i mean you were just like you better not beat me you you just better not beat me because you saw i was i said that like i was screwing days. around i was i was throwing out i was mixing recipes that i'd never cooked before that is true <laughs> and it is still a point of sadness but you you mentioned earlier old goat versus new goat. Does there have to be one person designated as the goat? And I've had this argument with several people today. For example, it's very easy to say that Tiger Woods is the greatest golfer of all time, right? No. Okay, about I Jack, agree. What about Jack Nicklaus? It's, it's exactly. I, and I, to answer your question, no, I don't think you do. And I look, it's it's for debate. Like all this stuff's for debate, right? Like it's for fun. Like right. if somebody, the fact that somebody would sit down and have that argument, it's for fun. I mean, I don't think, you know, Darren and I both cook. We love cooking. We're not out there to sit there and, 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 you know, I, I, I'm not like, when I go cook, I'm not sitting there going, 
man, I got to be the, you know what I mean? I'm going out there to cook because I love cooking. And, and just the fact that, that we can draw enough interest that, that people have this conversation, just like Jack and, and Tiger or LeBron and Michael, man. I mean, I, I think that's great. I think it's awesome. Do I think there's any way to settle it? I, I, man, I, I mean, you can make, you can sit there and go through it and you can make arguments all day long. If somebody, if somebody, you know, you know, somebody that's cooked against Darren back in the day is going to say Darren is. And somebody that's been cooking against me lately might say I am, but could, could you sit there and put it to bed and say that's the conversation? No, I don't, I don't think you ever can, you know, with, Somebody'd have to come along and, you know, I'd have to do what I've been doing for another freaking 10 or 15 years before you could even think about that. Or Darren would have to go back and do what he was doing back, you know, for 10 or 15 years before you can do it. It's just, it, there's just, it, no, there's no way to settle it. I mean, it is, it is what it is, man. It's, Darren's a hell of a cook and, and, and I think I'm a pretty good cook and, and, and I'll, I'll let people argue. I think it's great. Yeah. And, and before that, you know, before when I first got started in 2003, it was Johnny Trigg and, and Mike Davis. Sure. I mean, if, if those, either one of those two were in a contest, and a lot of times they were there together because back then they were best of friends. But, you know, if they were there, you were playing for third. There was just no, if you went to a contest, Johnny Trigg was going to win that contest unless he fucked up. Right. I mean, that's just the way it was in 2003 and 2004. Hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that's part of the unfortunate thing about our, our, you know, you know, sport or whatever you want to call it is we do a terrible job with our history. Like we do, we do, we do an absolutely horrible job with our history. And, and it's just, you know, it's like one of those things. It's like, man, you, you quit cooking for a while at two, three, four years. Doesn't matter how great you are. You're going to be forgotten. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just, and it's just a shame that, that we don't do a better job of honoring our legacy and honoring some of these old cooks. Cause there's people, I mean, obviously everybody knows Johnny, but there's a lot of cooks back then that were great that, that people don't even know anything about. Don't know anything about. Yeah. I agree with that a hundred percent. And that's always been one of the background goals of this podcast is and the reason I do the interviews the way that I do is to kind of have a record of some of these older guys and some of the some of the veterans that I've I've recorded are some of the best interviews like the one I did with with Mike from QL you know half the people that love that interview had never heard of him you know newer people right. in the game and stuff and you know that guy's that got guy, 50 60 wins and you didn't, nobody knows who he is now. Well, just like Donnie Teal, everybody knows everybody knows Donnie Teal, but they didn't know Donnie Teal and Bart Clark cooking together from Boys from Tornado Alley just tore through the circuit, tore through the circuit. You know, I think they had 14, 15 wins one year, just as boy, and they were cooking their own teams. So they cooked their own teams, and then they cooked together from Boys from Tornado Alley, and they were just unbeatable at that point. Now that was pretty short lived. You know, Bart went on, did other things and Donnie's still on the circuit today, but he doesn't play the circuit like he used to back then. But I mean, that was the A game. I think about the people Q out. I mean, we had to go against Q out all the time. I mean, we have fucking Q out pillows in our trailer still. I, I was he used to beat us and sure he'd sit there afterwards going fucking Q out, fucking Q out. I mean, she used it, to it be like crazy. Kim. Huh? <laughs> she used to be like Kim. <laughs> well, she wasn't serious about it, but we did have a fucking QL pillow and we still have a fucking parrot head blanket. You know, there, John Nilgis from Parrot Head. I mean, that guy can go nine months and not cook a thing and come out and win a contest. And I think he can still do that today. And he's, and he's like the ultimate screw around guy. I mean, he's cooking on two little tabletop Traegers now and just <laughs> killing it in brisket every single time. It's good. Huh. And, and and he just does it. Because, I mean, he's like, yeah, I just turn up the heat. You know, them can guys need a little sizzle. I can get a little sizzle going with my trigger right here. So, I mean, it's just crazy. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, part of that, the reason why, you know, Darren and I are even having this conversation with you is probably our longevity. You know what I mean? I think, I think, I think it's, 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 you know, how, how long that, that we've been at, at the top of the game. And, and it's, it, as Darren said, it's difficult. It's difficult to keep motivated. It's difficult to, to, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really hard to maintain excellence from year to year. I mean, you're constantly searching. Everybody else is out there trying, right? You got to go out there and find the new juice and, and you got to go out there and innovate. And, you know, I think you've seen a lot of innovation in barbecue coming from us because of our, our, our competitive drive and, and, and trying to stay out there and stay competitive and, and doing different things. And that was one of my points that when I was thinking about this, this interview was it is the longevity. I mean, you've, Darren, you said you've been cooking since 2003. 
Yeah. I, well, yeah, this is my 21st year, I think. Right. right. Brad, you've been That's going long, for. Long, yeah. <laughs> that is. I mean, I, I mean, I'm getting this stuff at 12 years. Right. Darren's just fucking old. <laughs> I mean, Darren, see, Darren, Darren was Darren was at at the top of the game when I when I came in. That's how that's how old Darren is. I mean, he was he was already to go. Well, he was a goat before I started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is accurate. That is accurate. I look back at some of that stuff. You know, I mean, it was just crazy that you know I go to the Royal, I get reserve. That was 2014, I think. I go to the Royal, I get reserve. I go to the Jack two weeks later, I win the Jack. And then the Monday after the Jack, I book tickets and I'm going to go cook Laughlin, Nevada for a $50,000 Corv or a Camaro. And Sherry looks at me and goes, I'm out. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm out. I'm like, I think I'm still going to go. And that's back when I had a pit still in Arizona. So I flew down there on Thursday and drove up to Laughlin and cooked in the worst windstorm I've ever cooked in under an easy up tent with no sides and ended up winning the contest. It was so bad. I had to cut every one of my boxes and put it on the cutting board and hold a piece of foil to hold the cutting board from blowing away and then go in a cooler, grab my nine by nine and quick put the meat in before it dried out. Into, I had to do every turn in that way and ended up winning. And it you was like, I look back at that. I'm like, there's just no way. Well, the box, <laughs> in, the car, just, box in the front seat of the car and out, out oh, west. Oh, yeah. in there. Well, they wouldn't let us keep our vehicle in the site then. So I couldn't even have my Tahoe next to me to block the wind. That's what was crazy. Well, I remember when he won that contest. Yeah, that was a good time. <laughs> I got some great <laughs> videos from that. And I think the other thing that is, is astonishing to me. So I've had the honor of cooking with both of you and just how dynamically different each approach is, but it's all getting to the same place. And I think that's what's just incredible about our hobby is how many different ways there are to get there. Sure. Does that make sense? Ex explain, Luke. What's the What's the difference cooking with me versus... Brad. Brad is pure, pure feel, pure instinct, pure. Yours is pure. Now, this is, I'm going day by day myself. This is, I'm going to go back to whenever we first, when I was learning on a jambo. And yours was more mindset and determination. And Brad just has this innate thing. That's what I noticed cooking with him in Jersey last year was like, he just knows when things are done and knows when to do things. And there's no set time. Whereas when Darren is on his game, there's this look and there's this <laughs> mannerism. Like I remember first time we were at the speedway on Sunday morning, I came over and said, good morning. It's like four 30. And you looked at me and I went, uh Oh, uh Oh, we're in, the, we're in trouble here today. This is different. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've never, you know, this is different. And, and just watching, you know, being cooking with Brad in October and watching Brad make adjustments from day to day, but not like, not in a crazy fashion, but just in a very just feeling fashion and cerebral. Does that make sense? Like, I don't, yeah, it, it was two different things. Hey, yeah. I think you're trying to say flyway saying, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> well, and, and I have no taste buds. You know, that's that's my problem. I can't taste his shit and think. So it all, I don't even taste it anymore. And it's like, I can't even stand to have the crap in my mouth. So, it, I mean, I'll eat my chicken, but everything else, I don't even, I, I mean, I if you made me put a burn in in my mouth, I would puke. Unless it's at Blaine's restaurant. And Porky Butts, oh, he, he always throws burn ends on my plate. And I'm like, dude, I fucking hate burn ends. And I just eat every one of them. They're so good. But in competition <laughs> barbecue, the taste of an injection just like, well, just makes me want to puke. Hate it. And so I'm not a good finisher. I could be really good if I was a good finisher, but I'm not a good finisher. I think I can hit the tenderness, but I'm just not a good finisher. Whereas in two days, I saw more about finishing from Brad than I've ever dreamed about learning. Well, he, he, I think he learned from the goat of finishing, Tim Shear. I mean, I think Tim Shear is the best finisher in barbecue. Oh, yeah. Hands just, down. 
hands down. He just understands flavor, and he just understands that if this needs salt, it doesn't necessarily have to come from salt. It can come from brisket injection. It can come from a whatever, <laughs> right? Well, and he's just like when we cook together, you know. And, and it, it's funny because I'm doing the the cooking and hitting the tenderness, and then it, it's like, all right, you know. And and it's fun cooking with Tim because I completely trust him in that category. Like you know as well as I do. Like when you're cooking with somebody, it, it's hard because you know how good you are, and it's hard to sit there and just okay, you have that part with Tim. You, you send it in there for him to finish it. And it, you know, it's going to be right. Like, there's just no doubt in your mind. So you hit tenderness. You know, we were cooking, you know, ribs at Memphis and Bay. I, I knew I hit tenderness. He's going to hit the flavor. We're going to have a chance to, you know, we're going to have a chance to hit the stage. And it's a lot of fun. But yeah, there's no doubt. Tim's palate. And, and he's trained. I've watched Tim work on his palate. You know, I've sat there and seen him eating rubs and then he'll sit there and read the ingredient labels. And he's sitting there trying to pick out individual stuff. And he'll pick out stuff that's, you know, where they have spices that's not on the label. Like, this is this, this is this, this is this. And then you can start tasting it. And you're like, God, God damn it. He's right. Exactly. <laughs> like, he's yeah. not even on the label. You know what I mean? He's like, no. And it, yeah. And he's, he's actually already blessed at it. And he actually works at it. And it's really cool to see if anybody ever gets a chance. I've been trying to get him on the barbecue league to do something about, about that, about palate and about, about building rubs and building sauces and stuff like that. But, uh, we'll get that one out as soon as he's not, you know, wrangling cows and, Whatever it is, Tim does. and drink and drinking tequila at the Daytona 500 and exactly the rain, no cars, <laughs> no cars. That looked like no cars. That looked like a lot of fun. Or <laughs> rain. We get we all left before they started racing. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me, they're like, "Are you feel bad you didn't stay?" I'm like, uh, it, n- "No." <laughs> and you're sitting there talking. It's, it's kind of funny because because everybody's kind of hampered. It's like like. It, look, if Tim ever took the cooking part, like if he ever got that in or dialed in, he's just got something in his brain where he just doesn't, he just, he will not focus on that. If he ever did, like he'd never lose. It's just like you, Darren, you were talking about finishing. If you ever took your, 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 you know, your cook and you ended up could finish like it, like if you two ever went together on that, like it'd be unstoppable. So it's almost like, like, you know, you, you know, there's a, there's a higher power that's sitting there saying, Hey man, let's level it out. Because if, if either one of you guys ever, you know what I mean? It, 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 nobody'd ever beat Tim if that guy would figure out. Like, the guy can't cook at all. It's, I mean, that, that was, I, I joke about that. He can flavor stuff, he can do whatever, but his cooking is just a mess, right? He's just Tim. But, He's a hot mess. I, that's, that's his cooking. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, I find it funny because it's just, I watched Darren cook on a single can a couple of weeks ago. And like a week before that, I was with Brad in Orlando and he mentioned he might start taking his jambo out and start cooking on it. And <laughs> that's kind of where all of this started in my brain. Well, it was at that barbecue league event down at Proud Souls in Orlando where I heard two guys having this argument about who was the goat. And then when Brad, Brad had a stick burner going, I was like, Oh, what are you doing over here? And he goes, messing it up. He goes, I might take the Jambo out a couple of times. And then just, the next week, Darren's like, I'm going to cook on a single can. I'm like, this is funny. Like I, it's all coming together. I was embarrassed for you stick burners, how good those ribs were. I, I sit there and think, how the hell do I ever beat any the ribs off this thing? They were freaking incredible. Uh, so that's what I was like, man, I need to take this thing out. They were just accidentally incredible. So I was running the dirtiest damn fire you've ever seen. It was, it, I mean, it, that thing was chugging. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, I'm throwing wood on there. I let the pit go out one time. I was like, oh shit, I got to put, I, I got, I can't just walk away from the thing. I got to put stuff on there. They took for fucking ever. You know what I mean? I'm just like, God, these things ever get, and then you went up there and sliced them and you're like, fucking perfect rib. It's a they perfect were, rib. they were really good. <laughs> and, yeah. See, it's, I had the same thing with the can. I thought you kind of had to manage a can. They'd have to do shit. No, the less I mean, you manage, the better they are. I was, I was just sitting there going, okay, I'm just going to let this thing run. And it just ran and it ran and it ran. It ran fine until, well, I figured you're supposed to, if you're going to cook a full contest on, you probably should fill the fire basket all the way up. Yeah. yeah that's so, probably- so I, I had to do a reload and steal some coals out of the jambo. During turn ins, in order nice. to uh, be able to finish off some stuff, but it worked. Yes. That's all Drew is one can, one can go out there and whoop everybody thing. Yeah, but his, his timeline, he sent me his timeline. Yeah. It was holy shit. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. There's, there's a different way to do this. That is he do it all at once or is he doing it 
Oh, well, he had his ribs stacked underneath his wrapped briskets. And I'm like, it took six hours to get his brisket done. I'm like, dude, stack your ribs on the end. Right. So now I, I got to find a single rib rack. If I can find two single rib wraps and I can cook my pork on one side, my, my uh, brisket on the other side. And if I need to, if they're not off, then I can cook my ribs on the end, but I'm going to have to stand them up to make room. I think it, both, just it didn't matter. You had both big meats off by eight o'clock anyway. <laughs> oh, no, I know it, into my <laughs> back of my Tahoe. So when I went to turn in time and they were at 98 degrees, nice safe holding temperatures. Cause I refused <laughs> to use a Cambro. <laughs> yeah. Well, the partner wasn't there. Oh, yeah. It's two hours. You're good. Yeah. yeah. It only, it only held for, I don't know, from seven thirty to one thirty. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, judges that listen to show me, but... uh, yeah, a few, but I'm just kidding. Yeah, judges doesn't matter. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a good, you know. I just thought it'd be fun to get together and talk about this because it's just it was, all that stuff was coming together. So, yeah, I mean, um, no, it's good, man. I mean, like I said, I mean, there, you know, I came up watching there, and you know, somebody asked me, I'm gonna tell them there, you know, and uh, I'm not out there. You know, he's a Hall of Famer. You know, resume speaks for himself. <laughs> he's not, a Hall of Famer. I'm not out here. You know, I'm. I look. I'll let. I'll let other people decide. I'm not out here to tell you. I am what I am, or whatever. Come and cook against me. We'll see what happens. And and uh, you know, anybody out there, and I'll just let my resume, and my cooking speak for itself. You know what I mean? And it's just where let you know. But what, what, whatever everybody thinks, I'm just honored to be in the conversation. Like I said, it's just it's just one of those things that you just never. You know, it's just you wake up one day and all of a sudden you have people talking that way, and you're like, oh man, I mean that's crazy. Oh. Must have must have won something, right? I yeah, must have done something because I, I remember <laughs> back when, you know, I'm you know remember my first win like it was you know like it was yesterday. I remember my you know just just everything. So it's just it's 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 definitely cool and and, and you know an honor to be even in the discussion of this like this. Just, just just think how good we'd be, Brad, if if we promoted ourselves like Myron and Mo. I know I I can't I need. It's, I just can't do it. I, I'm the same way. And it's just, it's just, I know, I know I should. And, and I, I just, I just, I, I just can't do it. You know, that's exactly it. And it's just like, I guess, you know, self respect and, and a little, you know, dignity or whatever, you know, whatever we want to call it. It's, it's worth more than, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely not going to whore myself out. I mean, I turned down so much TV just because I'm like, no. No, I'm not here to promote Darren. You want to do something for the, I mean, we got a new handball special coming out that we filmed here. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. You know, and I was more excited about that than being invited to barbecue pit masters. <laughs> that's awesome. Which I turned out every year. Probably. What's a handball? Are you shitting me, Luke? Do you ever get on the internet at all? I do, but I'm not looking up handballs. It's the Saturday special at Smokey D's. Oh. It's a it's an Iowa comfort food. So on the internet, it, it it's really think meatball made with ground pork and ground ham in a very sweet ketchupy brown sugar glaze. So they're so sweet you can hardly. But if you went to a family picnic in Iowa, you somebody brought the handballs or an athletic banquet. Somebody always brought the handballs, and so there's this big discussion with Justin Anderson from Rum and Smoke. Because mm-hmm. he's from Sioux Falls. Well, at Sioux Falls, it's all about Chislick. Have you heard about Chislick? What's Chislick? Oh, Luke. So Chislick in Sioux Falls you is you take is, a piece, you either take lamb chislic. or beef, right? I mean, from South Dakota, and I've, I've never heard of Chislick. So, so Chislick, so you take a piece of, and it's on every menu in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. You can go to Pizza Hut. And they will have chislic on the menu, right? And so it's it's like a cube of meat, not a big cube of either lamb or beef, okay? And like sirloin or something like that. And they throw it directly unseasoned in the deep fryer. And they cook it till, you know, it's medium or whatever. They pull it out of the deep fryer, dump it in a basket, give you a shaker of garlic salt, and then sometimes a dipping sauce to go with it. And it's an appetizer. And it's really good. It can be really good. It can be really bad. Right. But it's a thing in South Dakota, just like handballs are a thing in Iowa. So there's this big conversation all the time on the internet of 
handballs versus Chislik, and we're just roaring each other back and forth. Must be East River. East River. I don't, th- I don't think anybody wins in the handballs versus Chislik war. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have we don't have seafood, Luke, because you wouldn't dare buy an oyster in Iowa because it took four days to get there. Good point. So you got to have something. So it's hot mm-hmm. roast beef and ham balls and, okay. fried pork, next, and fried pork tenderloins. Next time I'm in Iowa, I look forward to trying ham balls. So yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for being on here. I'm going to let you both get back to your uh, warm weather, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Yeah, okay. Appreciate it, Luke. okay, see ya. Thank you for listening to Pitmaster, an old Virginia Smoke podcast. Be sure to subscribe and like the podcast, rate the podcast, and to share it out with your friends. Also, be sure to check out the Old Virginia Smoke TikTok as well. Old Virginia Smoke, one word. That's all you have to search for. It's hilarious. Tune in next week for another great episode of Pitmaster. For companies interested in advertising, please contact Old Virginia Smoke directly via www.oldvirginiasmoke.com. Pitmaster and Old Virginia Smoke Podcast is edited by Chris Sedanka. Pitmaster and Old Virginia Smoke Podcast is a property of Old Virginia Smoke LLC. Old Virginia Smoke. Old Virginia. Old Virginia Smoke.